Okay, so this is your atmosphere and air pollution, um, your chapter 18 PDF video supplement. And one thing I want to talk about here first is pressure, and that is air pressure, where it comes from. Your um, chapter doesn't really address this very much. So let's pretend right now we have this trough of, of a mercury solution. Most of you are probably familiar with mercury. It's um, a liquid metal, symbol HG. And um, it's used in thermometers, of course. And this is a barometer, kind of a schematic of how a barometer works, not an actual barometer. We also use mercury in barometers. We use it because it's dense. So it's a pretty heavy liquid, which means that you know it's not going to rise up very high. Um, I can make a barometer out of other fluids but I might need, you know, a building 33 feet tall if I was to make it out of something like water. So we tend to use mercury for that reason. So just imagine we have this mercury trough here. And this little tube here, so what this is here, this is a tube that's um, closed at one end and open at the other. We fill it to the very brim with mercury, and then we tip it over into the mercury trough without letting any air in, okay? Um, so effectively, the mercury then fall under the force of gravity, right? Just like anything falls, and let's say it stops right here, and that's the height of the mercury based on, you know, the gravity falling down. And what you have up here, this gap here, is basically not air because we didn't let any air in, so it's basically a, a vacuum. So now the mercury can rise and fall based on the air pressure. Now it's the combination of these two forces that determine how far up this tube the mercury is. So let's imagine now what air pressure is. We said in both your, your chapter you read and also the slides I gave you that pressure is force per unit area. So imagine a column of air sitting on top of you. That is the force. That is what air pressure is. So it's pushing down like this on the mercury. So this is air pressure. It's basically pushing the mercury up like this into that tube because of the pressure of the air. So it's a balance of these two forces, the weight of you know gravity accelerating the mercury down the tube, and then also the air pressure pushing it up, and it settles at this particular height. Okay. Now, if we're at sea level, if we were to measure that height at sea level, it'll be 760 millimeters of mercury. So it'll be 760 millimeters high. And most of you are somewhat familiar with the metric system, but 760 millimeters is actually equal to 76 centimeters. So centimeter is a bigger unit. So basically you just move the decimal place by one over here. So millimeter is actually 10 to the minus 3 meters, and centimeters 10 to the minus 2. So they differ by a factor of 10. So if you will, this is 0 0.76 meters. And a meter, you've held, oh, probably held a meter stick, it's roughly a yard. Okay, so you know what a yard stick is, and this is almost three quarters, right, 0.75, or a little bit more than three quarters. So we're thinking about, picture a meter stick, about three quarters high is how far the mercury would rise at sea level. Okay, another unit we use is atmospheres, and this is equal to one atmosphere, 760 millimeters of mercury is the same as one atmosphere. Now, if I were to take this um, trough of mercury, this barometer, up to, say, Mile High Stadium, where the atmospheric pressure there is only 0 0.8 atmospheres, so it's about 80% of what it is down here, the mercury would only rise to 80% of that. You could just do 0 0.8 times 760 to figure out what that is, but it would rise less. So at, at Mile High Stadium, it only might rise to here. The mercury because there's less less air pushing down on this mercury that's really where air pressure is coming from okay all right so uh, it's also one reason why it's much harder to breathe at a higher atmosphere because they're a higher altitude because there's lower air pressure now your book introduces you to a lot of air pollution um, types of air pollution. I want to talk about some of the chemical reactions associated with air pollution. So since we um, haven't covered any, you know, it's just fundamental 
chemical reactions yet. So what I'm going to do is just write a chemical reaction here. This is carbon plus oxygen gas goes to CO2. So the way we look at this now, it's a chemical reaction. What's written on the left side are your reactants and the right side are your products. The arrow basically means yields. And what this is saying is these two reactants, carbon plus oxygen, yields the product CO2. I want you to think of these like Lego blocks. And that means now that all chemical reactions have to be balanced. Now, you're not going to be responsible for balancing any chemical reactions. We'll leave that to the scientists. But it's important that you understand why they're balanced. So imagine these are Lego blocks. And you have this one black box block here, and you have these two yellow blocks attached together. Ultimately, we can pull this two yellow apart, but ultimately the numbers on the right side have to be the same as the left side. We can't, you know, lose any of these blocks or create any new ones. So over here, we ha still have to have one black and two yellow. We can pull them apart and rearrange them, okay? So, if we take another reaction, so this is a common reaction. This is just like a combustion reaction because you're burning a fuel. So you might have heat here. So this might be what your car does. This is your fuel. This is a carbon compound. You're burning it. This could be coal. Okay, it just symbolizes the carbon in a particular fossil fuel that we'll talk about later on in the chapter. Reacts with oxygen to form CO2. Now, in some cases... There's more carbon than there is oxygen. And the result then is carbon monoxide. So you'll notice in the top reaction, there's equal amounts, if you will. If you will, a one-to-one -one relationship gives you a one CO2. So as long as those are effectively in those equal amounts. But if we have, let's say, more carbon now, you can see the problem. If I were to do this, whoops, if I had this written originally, Now see the problem with your Lego blocks. I have two black here and two yellow. And over here, I have one black and two yellow. Where's the other black? The problem is you can't just do this and put it over here because that's not what happens in the reaction. The oxygen reacts with the carbon. So the idea here is what happens is if, if in fact this is the case, we wind up with actually forming carbon monoxide because the ratio of these are not proper to get... CO2. So we wind up getting carbon monoxide, but to balance this effectively, we have to have a 2 out in front here. What you can't do is balance things by putting numbers down here because that changes the product. That always has to be done out in front. So this is a reaction that occurs when, in fact, the carbon and oxygen are not in the proper ratios, and you have more fuel, if you will, than oxygen, you wind up with carbon monoxide. This is an air pollutant that's toxic, this one here is non-toxic. Even though there's problems with climate change, we'll talk about it in another chapter, it's non-toxic. It's part of the normal cycling of carbon in our environment. So are there some other reactions your book talks about? Um, there's one that I want to, two more I want to point out. This one, when nitrogen and oxygen react in the presence of high temperatures, we get nitric oxide. Once again, Got to make sure this is balanced. I'm starting with two nitrogen on the left and two oxygen, you see. Two nitrogen atoms bound together. Two oxygen. This is the nitrogen molecule and the oxygen molecule. This is the way it occurs in air. But the, the product is NO, so which means we need to have a two out in front here. So this is nitric oxide, and this is a main component of photochemical smog that you'll read about in your chapter. So this hurt occurs anytime you burn a fuel because you bring in air to supply oxygen, but with that air comes nitrogen. Can't avoid that. 
nitrogen actually is the major component of the atmosphere. You should have seen in your, in your slides that it's 78% of the atmosphere. And that is an air pollutant associated with photochemical smog. Another reaction that's important is anytime we burn coal, most coal has sulfur as a contaminant, and you wind up with SO2. This is what we call primary pollutants, and that is they are emitted directly as pollutants to the atmosphere. Secondary ones are ones that form from other pollutants in the atmosphere, which I'll show you on the next slide. But that's just to give you an idea of chemical reactions, how we write them, some of the important ones you'll read about in your chapter in terms of air pollution. So let's talk about acid rain, which is now a secondary pollutant, because what happens is some of the uh, air pollutants that we release into the atmosphere can react further to form acids. Okay, and some of that's talked about in your chapter, and I think I mentioned some of it in one of your slides. We get things like this. These are three acids that form acid rain. Now I want to just introduce you to the pH scale. The pH scale runs from 0, roughly, up to 14. This end is acidic. This end is basic. Now... Acidity and basicity is not that easy to understand without a strong chemical background. What it is we're actually measuring, we're measuring the presence of certain species in a solution of water. Um, but I think most of you have a sense for what acidity is in, the, in that you've all maybe eaten a lemon that has that acidic acidness to it. You know, your stomach has acid in it, okay? It is corrosive. Um, and the pH scale something that's highly acidic is down here um, in this region here less than seven so the lower the number the more acidic it is so if your pH is two that's more acidic than pH of three okay um, and now rainwater has a natural pH of 5.6 that has to do with this acid right here. Carbon dioxide, when it combines with water in the atmosphere or in lakes, rivers, actually in your blood, too. This is the same acid. It's in our blood, in your natural waters, and in the atmosphere. It's called carbonic acid. This is it right here. That's an acid. So carbon dioxide is an acid, effectively, when it reacts with water. So natural rainwater, before humans ever walk the planet or anything, has a pH of 5.6, which is acidic. Acid rain is anything less than 5.6, which means from these acids here, we've lowered the pH even more. And in some cases, you can see pHs of around 3 for acid rain. So it's important to realize it's less than 5.6. Um, just to give you an idea of some basic products, things like ammonia and oven cleaner, these are bases that are going to be up in this region. Um, we already mentioned uh, like uh, lemon juice and stomach acid. Uh, um, um, coffee is acidic, tomato juice, stuff like that's going to be down here. So that just gives you an idea of the basic acid base scale and how it applies to acid rain. Now there are some health concerns with air pollution. I'm not going to go into grave details with these um, and you can read a little bit about it in your chapter, but one of the big things that I want to mention is particulates. And we, we abbreviate this PM, and it really stands for particulate matter. And these are just small particles. You know, you've all seen a fire burn. You get these small particles in the air. The smaller they are, the more dangerous they are. They get more trapped in your lungs. They can't get, they get past your, like, nose hairs and your cilia and things like that. And they get deep into your lungs and they cause scar tissue and cancer and things like that. You can have problems with emphysema from air pollution, um, uh, stroke, heart attack, things like this that develop from air pollution. Um, and the real small ones can actually get into your lungs and then get into your blood, actually can pass from those alveoli in your lungs into your blood. One of the last things, I, the last thing I want to talk about is really solutions to air pollution. Um, 
And one of the things I talked about is the catalytic converter in your car. And I think the reaction I showed you with the uh, um, slides was this one. Okay, so the ones on the left are pollutants. We mentioned this already. What a catalytic converter is, is basically a large surface area reactive material. And what happens is these guys won't typically do this right here in just a gas phase. What we do is we provide a surface for them that allows them to come together and react. And, and the resulting products are basically non-toxic. So that's all your catalytic converters do is providing a large surface area material that brings the NO and the CO together that of course is, causes them to react. But there's other solutions out there of course. You can, this catalytic converters are something we've been doing for years, okay? I mean, in this country in the 70s we started putting catalytic converters on. Um, you can also install smokestack filters basically. Kind of think of it like a, a HEPA filter, something similar to what's on your vacuum cleaner. You can filter out particles, okay? You can also do things like burn low sulfur coal. You can actually, if you've heard the word clean coal technology, it's not exactly clean, but you can convert your coal to liquid or gases in a controlled environment and then burn that. That is cleaner than just burning coal, but it's certainly not clean coal. Um, and other things you can do, obviously, is, you know, develop mass transit, tax pollution, that is created and things like that. So this is stuff that's covered fairly thoroughly in your in your chapter reading. So to, to summarize then, what you should get out of reading your PDF chapter, looking at the slides in this video, um, is knowing something about the structure of the atmosphere. There's different regions where things like the ozone layer reside, some characteristics of those regions. Types of outdoor air pollution, you're not responsible for indoor air pollution. We just talked about it in your chapter, but I do not cover it. So just focus on outdoor. Smog, photochemical smog, know what the necessary components are to get that. Know the basic acids that contribute to acid rain, what are some of the effects of that. Read about health concerns for air pollution. And also read and look over some of the solutions we just talked about. And that concludes your... Um, atmosphere and air pollution video.